Welcome to Bellman Woodworking and Designs with me, Brent Bellman. Today, we're going to look at how to make one of these a time organizer. take just a quick moment to make a special announcement and that is that now you can find me on Patreon. Patreon is a place where you can go and choose to support me and choose to support the videos and all the things that I do. So I appreciate all y'all watching and liking the video, subscribing, thank you so much. If you can, before you leave this video, check out the link below, check out the card at the top and go check out my Patreon page and I would love your support. Thank y'all so much. Okay, for this project I used a 1x12 of the premium pine that I bought from Home Depot. And I started by cutting everything to rough length uh, with this. So this is the straight 1x12 board. Everything was cut to length. After I did that, I ran everything over the table saw to cut the dados. And instead of actually using a dado blade, which I do have, I ended up just cutting the dados with the slots, just move the fence over a little bit of time to make sure I had those dados cut uh, enough for uh, eight inch plywood to fit inside of there. After I did that, I used a jig that I made from Nick Ferry, and I'll put a link to that in here, to cut all the dado slots uh, for the tie inserts that I used. And this is the second one of these that I made, um, and before I did a different joint to connect them together, but this time I did use dowels so made sure to mark for all the dowels there to have those connect the all the sides of the box together um so here again is the jig from nick ferry that i used to cut all those dados for the tie inserts and man that made everything go a lot faster so i highly recommend that um so the shot you just saw cut the drawer and just cut that out from the front so you make sure you have everything planned out for this project it's got to be a planned project uh, where you cut pieces at the end and kind of have to fit everything together, know how it's going to work before you can glue everything up. So cuts got to be made and just have everything ready to go and you kind of glue everything up towards the end. So it's kind of those things you got to be patient with this project, um, have everything ready to go and cut the pieces out ahead of time like I said and then everything kind of fit together at the end so you can have to wait for that final product. Uh, but here I did glue everything up. You can see that space in the middle is left for the drawer, but that drawer is just cut out of the front of the box. Um, so you save that piece. And the nice part is when you cut it out, you'll have your eighth inch gap. You just have to make sure and set your cleats on the inside, um, which is something I didn't do here. As you can see, I'm clamping it up. I really should have put the cleats in first. I added the cleats later which still worked, but it would be easier if I had marked where the cleats were gonna go for the drawer and then put everything all together. But everything here is clamped and then it's ready to go. So over here I'm actually cutting out the uh, sectional inserts that'll keep the ties separated. And those were, uh, the spots of the ties are three inches by three inches by three inches. Um, so I used the bandsaw to go and cut out where all those will the inserts will be separated there. So here I am uh, putting all those in. So you can see it makes a nice divided section. So up here at the top is where all the ties will go. So these are all again, three inches by three inches by three inches. At this point I am putting together the drawer. I'm again cutting the dados out uh, for the plywood that will fit in the bottom of the drawer. And again, I do have a dado blade. I just didn't feel like changing out the blade, so I just ran the boards over um, until I had the grooves that I needed. So, and again, this is all uh, eighth inch plywood uh, that I used for that, um, that's going down inside of there. So, um, once everything was cut and I cut all the grooves for the sides of the door, then it was ready to go um, and put everything together. Now, the fun part of this project for the drawer is all the sections, the little dividers, It'll go inside of there. And so again, here I'm cutting wood down to size to end up uh, making the dividers. It'll go inside of there. And I'm sure some of y'all are wondering why I didn't use a bandsaw to resaw those boards, but my bandsaw is not cut very straight right now. So I've got to figure that out. Um, that's just something to learn along the way. But here I'm, I'm gluing in the dividers uh, that make this project fun. One of the fun parts about it uh, to be able to use this. 
is having those dividers to be able to have, put all the things that you might want to put in this box in there. So um, I wanted to make sure you got small dividers to the left and they gradually get larger for bigger items um, that the person using this box would have. Okay, so here I'm cutting the cleats for the drawer, and the cleats will allow that drawer to sit at an even 1 8 inch spacing on the top and the bottom. And here I'm gluing those in place, and again, it would have been better to have added those in before, but it worked out great still adding them in this time. Right here I am cutting the top pieces that will be for the box to fit together, and ended up uh, mortising those together so they would give a great look to the box, but also be a functional a way to hold those pieces together and make a great joint. So again, it looks really good, especially when you can see it up close in person, and it just gave a nice look to the box. The top of the box is also glued together using wood glue, and I used a right angle square there to make sure that everything was square all, all together when it was done. So over here I'm setting up the hinges that I bought from Rockler. These were 90 degree stop hinges to make sure that the box lid won't go all the way over the top when it's open. I use a router to kind of cut out most of the wood there and then went back to the chisel to square everything up so it would look nice and neat. So before putting any hardware on the box, I wanted to make sure I could go back and stain it. So this is from General Finishes. This is their antique walnut that I buy at my local woodcraft store. So I've used it for lots of products. I really like the color. It's nice. Uh, because it's a gel stain, so there's no pre-stain or anything. You just simply put it on, wipe it off, and it works good. But the only downside to this is getting it into small spaces. So for the drawer, it is a bit difficult to work it into all the spaces that are there. But it ends up looking really great when it's all done. And again, it's easy. You wipe it on, you wipe it off, and you're done. So I definitely recommend that for any kind of larger projects that you don't want to have to worry about trying to do a pre-stain and then put an actual stain on itself and worry about whether the stain takes evenly to all the wood. So definitely a good choice. Once I had everything stained, then I was ready to put on the hardware. So at this point, I did go back into the hinges. These are the stop hinges I was talking about that I bought from Rockler, which worked great. I um, used these on the last box like this I made, so I decided to use them again. And I just put those hinges in using a hand screwdriver. To, that way I would make sure I didn't strip out the screws for the wood when I was adding those in. Now to actually add the lid on the top, I made sure to prop the box up. That way the box wasn't sitting on the table and we had space for the lid. So I just put another piece of wood underneath there that propped it up, as you can see there in that shot. That way I could put on the lid and it would be able to sit right where it needed to. Now when this is all said and done, I actually had to end up going back and uh, sanding around the top of the box. It was just barely off. So I just went around and sanded everything to where it was even and actually ended up restaining it. Now over here, I actually could do put a piece of glass in the top for this. Um, so I went back and cut pieces of wood that would end up fitting as a border to hold all the glass in place. So that's uh, what's going on here. Once I had all those pieces cut, I did glue those and tried to clamp some of them. They actually ended up uh, holding in place really well um, with the glue. So the glue did its job and made sure they stayed there and just made a border all the way around the inside and large enough for the glass to fit in. And then I added the glass and repeated the process on top. Now something that was recommended to me was putting silicone all around the top in case the glass ever broke. And I do think that's a good idea, but I felt like it just looked better to have wood on top. My very last step was to clear coat and then add all the hardware on. And that finished it up, so I hope you enjoy this project. I know I really did, and it turned out awesome. So hopefully you can make one yourself. Try it out.